In VA, the three judges who sat in the Court of Appeal had a very difficult decision to make. They had to decide whether the twins should be separated, and if so, the weaker twin would die and the stronger twin would probably survive, or whether the operation should not be allowed and therefore the twins would die. Now this case involved an application by the hospital to the court to work out whether or not the operation should be allowed. And that's why there's quite a lot of discussion in the case about family law matters and about the welfare of the children. But the case is also really important for the criminal law because if the court allowed the operation to take place, the surgeon who conducted that operation, resulting in the death of one of the girls, might be guilty of murder. And if the surgeon was guilty of murder, that operation simply could not be allowed. So this case really turned on whether the surgeon conducting the operation would be guilty of murder. Now the Court of Appeal considered that quite carefully. They considered that if the operation occurred and the weaker twin did die, then the doctor who conducted the operation would have caused the death of that twin. Also, they had to consider whether that doctor would have intended to kill that girl. And they concluded that the doctor would have the necessary intent to kill. Not because that's what he wanted, but because it's something that he would have foreseen as a virtually certain consequence. So the case therefore turned on defences. Would that doctor have a defence to murder? And this is why the case is so important. All three judges in the Court of Appeal concluded that the doctor would have a defence. Two of the judges, Lord Justice Brooke and Lord Justice Walker, focused on a defence of necessity. The idea that it was necessary to conduct the operation, resulting in the death of the weaker baby, so that the stronger one could survive. You could sum that up as acting for the greater good. It's better that one of the babies survives rather than both die. But another judge adopted a slightly different approach. He focused rather more on a notion that he called quasi-self-defence. Lord Justice Ward said that the weaker twin, the one that was destined to die, could be regarded by her very existence as threatening the existence of the stronger twin. And because the stronger twin was in effect being attacked by the weaker twin, it was possible to argue that the doctor should intervene and protect the stronger twin from that attack. Now, this case tells us something quite interesting about the criminal law. We have three judges who all reached the same result, that this operation should go ahead, but they use different reasoning to reach that result. Now that's very common when you analyse the law, that different judges use different arguments, sometimes producing different results, sometimes the same. But it's then important to step back and consider whether those arguments are successful and convincing. And that's something you need to think about. Do you think that the doctor should have been authorised to conduct the operation and so separate the twins? And if so, do you think there is an appropriate defence for that doctor? And which defence is the most appropriate one to adopt?